Every other kid nowadays wants to be a creator. But what if I told you you didn't have to be in front of the camera or own your own agency in order to be paid to travel to create? I'm a creator who was paid to travel from Denver, Colorado to Austin, Texas to create Instagram stories for an event without owning my own agency or being the one in front of the camera. And I was able to do all of this with my phone. So I work as a social media strategist for a social media company based in Denver, Colorado. I spend my days creating strategy, managing social accounts, and of course, creating content. We have a client based in Texas who happens to host an event every single year around South by Southwest. And while their event isn't technically a part of South by Southwest, it's usually in the same area, it's around the same time, and so they attract a lot of those people. But the caveat is their event is invite only. In years past, our company has helped them with social efforts leading up to the event, creating graphics, coming up with strategy, helping them plan certain aspects of it. But this year we took it a step further and offered them something new, Instagram story live coverage. This year they decided to change the name of the event. And so to go along with our pitch of creating supporting content leading up to the event, we also decided to pitch this new concept to them. The main reason we did this is because the client's main goal is to create this FOMO around the event. Even though it's invite only, they want people to want to come to the event. And realistically, it's kind of hard to do that days, weeks, or even months after the event when they normally receive the high end photos and videos that they pay for every year. That's where we come in. The main pitch for this aspect was that someone from our team, me, would fly in the day of, create amazing Instagram story content to help boost this FOMO for people who were in the Austin area or could not or did not make the event. Needless to say, we won that pitch. And on March 10th, I woke up at 3.30 a.m. to fly from Denver to Austin. All right. It is 3.50 uh, a.m. for those of you who did not. For those of you who do not know, don't travel on the time switch, at least not the spring forward one, because I wanted to wake up at 2.30, but apparently the two o'clock hour is the one that gets skipped. So my alarm went off at 3.30. Getting to the airport that early in the morning without driving can be a bit of a challenge when I don't have many friends with cars here who also don't want to wake up that early on a Sunday. Those headlights should be in our Uber. like a million people decided to leave the Denver airport at 5 a.m. for some reason, I made it to my gate on time. flight there was actually pretty awesome as we only had 17 people on our flight on a plane that fits 170 some odd people. So in a dramatic turn of events, there are only 17 of us on this flight. Also, I made it. I rushed all the way over here. There are only 17 people on this flight. So let's go to Austin.
visited the venue about two hours before the event started. This allowed me to scope out the area, meet the client face to face, and ask any last minute questions that I might have in order to put together my game plan. It also gave me time to charge my phone since I had been up and using it since 3.30 a.m. Denver time. Austin, this is one of the most organized rideshare pickup places I've ever been to, but it is also one of the farthest walks. I don't like it. Everything is super loud over here, but we made it to Austin. We made it to the venue. Everything's getting set up right now. And uh, pretty soon I am not gonna be able to be on this camera and documenting it this way. So whatever I create, I'll throw up in uh, some like little sequence after this. But this is me announcing that I've made it here. I'm here, I'm here to do the event. And uh, let's rock and roll. You might think that my work starts when the event starts, but actually my work started about 30 to 20 minutes before the event. During this time, I captured what we would call establishing shots. Shots of signs, shots of areas that I knew I wanted to focus on that I thought people would congregate in. I was able to put out this story before the event started so that I could drum up a little bit of hype with our audience and anyone else who's paying attention to certain hashtags or location tags on Instagram stories. Once the event started, I was able to capture a line outside, guests entering the venue, the walk from where guests enter to the main area, the band getting set up and starting to play, and event sponsors, key people who were there, and any swag that people who show up might be able to take home. I began bouncing from all of the designated areas where I knew people would gather and where sponsors were set up so that I could capture photo and video. And I did this all with my iPhone. <laughs> Every 30 to 45 minutes, I would take a short break to check all of the content that I was capturing on my phone, edit a little bit of it, and see what would go with the storyline of, look at how cool this event is, don't you wish you were here? The event lasted about four hours. During that time, there are a few key pieces of equipment that I needed to make sure that I was able to do my job correctly. The first is a portable power bank. I had been on my phone basically all day and I'm running around with my phone camera open. So it's draining battery constantly. Realistically, there's no way that you're gonna be able to plug into the wall, have enough battery to run around. So carrying a portable power bank was essential. Next is a phone tripod. I like the Joby Gorilla Pods, 
And so that's what I have. Having a tripod not only helps you get certain shots, but it also helps you stand out from any other person who's just running around taking content with their phone. If you have equipment, it helps you look more official. Next is a wireless microphone. I knew that the client wanted to capture short video interviews, and I also knew that an on-camera mic, no matter how directional, would not be enough to capture clean audio in a loud event environment. So I choose to go with the Rode Wireless Mies, which has built-in noise reduction when you use them, and it also comes with all of the cables, so I didn't even need to buy extra cables or different things. It has a USB-C to lightning cable that plugs directly into my phone, so I'm able to just hand it to someone, they can speak directly into it, and that's it. The last essential thing is an editing app. So for photos, I choose Adobe Lightroom Mobile. I use Adobe Lightroom on my computer to edit all of my photos normally, so I'm no stranger to the mobile version. And for videos, I decided to go with CapCut. I knew my way around the app. I knew it's relatively fast. And so I decided to go with this. It's important that when you're choosing your apps, you know them well enough to be able to create quickly and export quickly so that you can upload in real time. For those of you wondering, I absolutely refuse to create inside of the Instagram app mainly for their lack of editing features and undo features. If you're gaining value from this video so far, please give it a thumbs up and I'd love to know which tip is helping you out so far. During the event, I periodically checked in with the client to make sure that they were okay, make sure that I was capturing the content that they wanted me to capture, and for them to point out key individuals that I should go up to take pictures of or get interviews with. Doing this gives them peace of mind that I'm doing my job and I'm on top of everything that they asked me to do. This also keeps them excited about my being there and the importance of my being there. This was a turnaround trip for me, so as soon as the event was over, I packed up all of my gear and my swag and headed back to the Austin airport. After checking in, I found something to eat, picked up my iPad, watched a couple YouTube videos, and got on the flight back home. day my team received an email from the client saying that they were so excited about all of the footage that I captured they loved the stories that I created and they generally really enjoyed having me there with them I would say that even though this trip was very fast it was a success I was able to utilize my skills as a creator to help the client and I did all of this again with my phone I say all this to say that one you don't need a bunch of expensive gear to be a creator you also don't need to be the one in front of the camera to be a creator, and you do not have to be the one to own the agency to be a creator. The only thing you need are the skills and the opportunities. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Until next time, do the work, believe in yourself, and keep creating. Peace.